<clears throat> I give him uh, incredible props for always uh, absolutely sledgehammering firearm safety into our brains from an early age. Uh, it, it always felt like second nature to me. And then at one point I had a friend, Simon, came over and he like very casually waved the barrel of an unloaded gun near one of us and uh, I watched my dad very quickly not give a shit that he wasn't this kid's dad and, and, and come unglued on him the same way that he came unglued on us over the course of many, many years. Um, I had kind of always hoped, I had kind of always hoped that, that the kids, you know, that the boy's first wet, you know, lesson in firearm safety uh, would come from my old man. I felt like that was a that was an honor that I, I I felt like I could pay him to sort of to sort of show um, I don't know a bit of an olive branch to show him that I'm not uh, even though he and I butt heads a lot these days uh, to to show him r respect uh, to, to 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 for lack of a better term to sort of to to show him honor. Yeah, God, I remember loving Little Monsters when I was a kid, but I, once again, like, I remember loving Revenge of the Nerds when I was a kid. I think it's awfully problematic, not just with, uh, shoehorning people into very, uh, n n narrow stereotypes, but also casual rape. <clears throat> so, I any older movie, there is definitely a part of me that, like, you know, I I'm going back and kind of re-screening it and going like, oh, how, how... How'd this go over? <laughs> what, what might I not have seen when I was 11? This room's a lot. I mean, like, it's not hard particularly, but there's a lot happening in this room. Yeah, Little Monsters, Drop Dead Fred, Little Nemo, or it was, a, it was a something Nemo in Dreamland. Yeah, that's that that that's actually my concern. Why is that? Like, I grew up in a household where there was just a lot of firearms. My dad legally sold firearms out of an office in in our house. Uh, at any given point in time, there could have been 10, 20 firearms in our house. But, like, they were demystified and treated with the adequate amount of reverence and respect. Uh, and it was made painfully clear to us very early what the consequences would be if we were ever caught treating it casually. Um, but, yeah, my boys, my boys have only ever been around, like, you know, ner nerf guns and Fortnite licensed merchandise but we live in a place that's like red blue mixed enough and and, and not like close enough to like the, the rural virginia is uh you know it's not it's not quite the rocky mountains but is it oh god what a terrible haul it's a pretty pretty decent sportsman's paradise you know so i could imagine at some point them going to a friend's house and you know the friend's parents having weapons there are responsible gun owners out there, and then there are really shitty gun owners out there, and I just want to prep them as though every gun owner they'll ever come across is shitty. I'd rather be pleasantly surprised than un unpleasantly uh, have my life ruined. <clears throat> my pop stuck around to see if I have kids. He's 100% going to be the firearms instructor for them. Uh... I had open weapons in the house and never feared them, but definitely respected them. Yeah, my dad, uh, all, I mean, my dad may still, uh, but my dad always had a, 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 for a long time, it was a loaded 9mm Glock in his nightstand. Uh, I think he, like, I think it changed and became a 6 hour 45. Um, I always knew that was there. Every once in a while, he'd send me to get something. 
that would involve like, hey, run, run in here and grab this. And if I didn't know where it was, I'd be like checking drawers. I go, right, loaded firearm, Beep. and I just close it back up and go back in the other room. Yeah, they give me they give me stored charges, but there's also a part of me that like I want to hold on to them because the last thing I want to do is burn them early. I don't want to burn them early and then find myself late in the game going like, oh, I've, I'm just dealing with base damage and it's terrible base damage at that. I want to be frugal with my charges early so that if I need to go balls out later, I'll have the resources necessary to do it. Come on, man. This fight would have gone a whole lot faster if this had been an enemy who touched the ground. I was gonna say, or, or he would just bomb himself once. Okay. No keys, which is kind of a bummer. We had four constantly in the house, one in the nightstand, one in the china cabinet, one in his backpack, and then one in his duty belt for work that was in the closet. Then we had a gun safe for the larger firearms. My dad didn't even have a gun safe it, in his bedroom. Like, we didn't have him stashed around the house. <clears throat> he had one in his nightstand. And then, uh, when we were in Texas, I, he, he, has a, he has a gun display. That's it. It was a gun display that was locked, but the fucking key sat in it. So it was like, it wasn't like that locked. Um... Yeah, I think I think the 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 handgun that was in his uh, nightstand was the only one that was ever loaded. It was it was loaded without a round chambered. Like he he knew that he could chamber around fast enough, and that that was just like at least one step between you know an accidental catastrophe, uh, but not something that would slow him down in in, in his mind in the case of a home invasion. Um. But yeah, man, I, I, I remember at certain times in, I remember at certain times in, in my childhood there being um, there being uh, uh, oh no there being AKs in the house there being Spaz 12s in the house like Yeah, thank goodness for Aquarius. I always get hit in this room. Um, a litany of, of, of sidearms. M16s. It wasn't like, it, it wasn't like that secret cache of weapons that Arnie gets in Commando. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like, it was... Generally speaking, like, an entire corner of an office just filled with weaponry. Pat, man, I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging out for a minute. Uh, Burkano. Yeah, now that uh, now that I have a house, the idea of home defense comes to mind. But being in Cali, all the regs and re uh, all the regulations, I'm not in an actual rush to get a gun. I, you know, there there are. I really didn't worry about it, and then I had kids and bought a house, and there is just the teeniest part of me. There is the teeniest part of me that's like. I wouldn't know how to, like, I wouldn't know how to store it safely. I don't trust myself to do the, the, the adequate job that my father did with regards to my boys. I, I, there's a part of me that just worries that I would basically just be the guy who gets his gun stolen and used against him. Like, that sounds, that sounds sadly and painfully more on brand for me. 
than my father, who's like a... <laughs> Remember Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon? That's basically my dad. Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon always reminded me of my dad. I, 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 I on the other hand, I, I'm just 100% convinced that I would... I would be the guy who'd, who'd have it stolen and, you know, have to go to the cops and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I put a... I put a Glock 9mm on the black market. I thought I was gonna defend myself, but I was at Costco. Mm. And, in, and instead I've contributed to the, uh, I've contributed to the difficulty of your job. My bad. Um. <clears throat> so, I don't know. There's a part of me that if there were ever a home intruder, it's rough for me too because like right after I moved to I mean right after I moved to Richmond I lived in a neighborhood of Richmond in an actor in a theater house where a fucking family of four was just brutally murdered in their fucking sleep by a guy who broke in and that was like the first that was like obviously that was a very rare thing to have had happen but it was like my first interaction with Richmond Um, so yeah, anyway, I don't know. I don't, tr I don't, I don't know that I trust myself with it. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. A 41 year old Danny Glover. I mean, that makes sense. Imgren. Imgren says uh, the reason I don't own a gun is I'm absolutely convinced I wouldn't use it. Like I couldn't, I, uh, couldn't actually pull the trigger. That's, that's good to know, right? I think you know. I, 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 I refuse be, because of my relationship with my dad and the experience that I have with him. I refuse to villainize all people who own weapons. There, are, there are responsible weapons owners out there. But it's also super important, you know to sort of shed this idea that you, you gotta have one, right? Like, oh yeah, the American dream. You're gonna have a, a house and a car and a garage and, uh, oh my, I'm in here now. <clears throat> and the dude made off with a whole bunch of presents. Broke a window, uh, broke a window. And then made off with a whole bunch of presents. So they, you know, obviously not feeling super comfortable with that situation. Um, just want to see what that would do. Sent my 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 then sister-in-law and my niece to go stay with family. And uh, my my brother-in-law stayed behind and stayed in the house to guard it. Well, sure enough, even. Even with a patched window, like a duct tape and cardboard patched window, this asshole came back while my brother-in-law was in the house. And they had a security camera that actually caught, like the guy, the guy pushes in the patch job they did on the window and gets half his body through the window. And then my brother-in-law storms in armed. Uh... And the guy pops right back out and takes off on a dead sprint. Uh, so entertainment, gentlemen, the the uh, le megaton, le megaton, le megaton, uh, the Lexington, Kentucky, down here is our active Q slot item. I say Q, it's the keyboard. Keyboard button is Q. Our secondary active item. And every time we pop that, we get a sprite or, or a wisp, and you'll see one of them coming around the left right now is actually technology one. We get laser tears for as long as that wisp exists. Limajet, Limajetin. And so yeah, it's the same thing with like the 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 creep that we have is Aquarius. Uh, our tiers uh, also technically have euthanasia to them. 
The only thing that we're guaranteed to keep if those wisps break are the items that's on the right-hand side here. Let me get it on. La Megatron. <clears throat> oh god, I didn't see that enemy. I just walked into him. I, ge I genuinely just saw the stuff on the far wall because I'm watching chat out of the left side of my... Out of the left side of my head. Out of my peripheral, I'm watching you guys. So I, I was not I was not paying attention at all and just walked into that guy and exploded him. Thank goodness one of the wisps got him. Ah. I don't think Blue Baby's only friend is the way there. The old lag metronome. That's both of those are super unfortunate. Okay. I don't know why stuff's on fire when we're coming in the room. I didn't see which thing I... Oh, I think I got fire mine. Never mind. That'll do it. That'll do it. Oh, no. It's kind of fun, if I'm being honest. It's not the worst thing in the world. Not the worst thing in the world. I think blessed penny is almost enough to just carry us through the run. Oh, the fireworks from the trinket? That makes sense. That makes sense. Taffy, I'm no longer single now. I'm in a poly relationship with three guys. Neat. That is, uh... Very curious to me. I just, uh, like, in, in that, that's uh, fascinating. It's a fascinating dynamic to me. From, from a, from a, like a logistical standpoint. I have no, uh, I have no, no moral inclination one way or the other. Logistically, though, that's curious. I'd be, uh, not, not, not here, not now, I don't think, but I have questions. Oh, no. Well, we lost euthanasia. I think I'm just gonna use use soy milk. There we go. Yeah, that like that. Any hangouts I have was just that I like I'm ba I'm barely a good like I'm barely a good relationship person with one person. I can't imagine trying to balance others. That's interesting. What if, though? Oh, right. You can play this game. I can't help but feel like soy milk's fucking that up. You know what? If I happen to be able to get Mango Santa out on this run, I should go ahead and get Mango Santa out on this run. Might as well, you know? I must not have been able to reach that chest. That's why all that stuff's still over there. It's the only thing I can think of. Was there anything else in the shop we cared about picking up? <coughs> oh, God, every time I go in that room, it's going to run the risk of, <clears throat> of knocking a wisp off us. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I don't think Revelation's charge time ever changes. I think, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Oh my God, why do I have flight? Oh, cause I got the Revelation. I could be wrong, I don't think I am. I, I genuinely, I genuinely think the charge time on Re Revelation stay. I, I don't remember it ever feeling like it ever gets faster. It's the only reason I don't get more fired up about it. Like flight is obviously great. I think that came from Revelation. Uh, flight's great and it does good damage, but fuck off. It always feels like it. I mean, for crying out loud, I've got soy milk right now. If there was ever a time, if there was ever a time where I felt like the, um, the charge time on Revelation was going to speed up, it, it would definitely be right now <clears throat> with soy milk. Hey, look at you go. Way to have our back, Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh my god. Um, I have no idea if I'm actually going to be able to protect him. I'll try. I'm not going to make it a priority, but I'll try. Speed was faster. Okay. getting golden bombs if I'm being honest genuinely don't remember getting golden or getting uh, eternal bombs go get him leech <clears throat> show that son of a bitch we mean business Get to take it with us for what it's worth but that said i'm gonna i'm gonna do my best to keep why why does he have a little protective thing around him is that bff is that bff lost soul he gets a an extra hit yo that's dynamite i've never seen that before oh if that's true that's so cool i got bad news monstro's tooth God, we mentioned, we mentioned Danny Glover, and now my head's fucking stuck in lethal weapon mode. Diplomatic immunity. It's just been revoked. Fucking love Danny Glover. I'm trying to figure out where a good place is to pop out here. That feels okay. Ooh. Holy Mantle, Lost Soul. 
Dude, we have uh, Tainted Bethany Red Key. That's kind of interesting. I keep forgetting that I have that. Yeah, we're learning all sorts of shit since this new file happened. It's amazing how much stuff managed to slip my slip my notice. How much stuff managed to escape my attention uh, on the first playthrough of all this. <clears throat> Man, I'm fucking tired of shit today. Stayed up way too late watching Sark do that IRL ghost hunting, which was great, but I'm paying for it. Did he really go ghost hunting? Like, actually went out into the world? It's like a le legitimate, has been like a legitimate dream of mine since childhood. Where did he go? What did he do? G can you give me the uh, the TLDR on that? Oh, Senior Peebo, like, yeah, if you're expecting... I totally get it. If you're watching Ghost Hunting and you're expecting anything legitimate to happen... I can understand being bored to tears by even by even the idea of it. That makes absolute sense to me. I've made it weird. Um That said, like when I when I think of like people actually trying to like ghost hunt. I genuinely don't think of like a I genuinely don't think of, like, the results of it. For me, um, it has everything to do with the atmosphere of the thing. I, ge I, don't, I don't think that's worth risking lost soul. I'd rather have the item. I, w the part that gets me is if you can spin a good story, if you can... I might as well find the second secret room. There's literally nothing holding me back from doing it. If you can spin a good story, if you can make me invested in the lore of what you're investigating, make it atmospheric. Make me care about what you're what you're looking into. And then it'll be kind of trivial whether like whether or not anything interesting happens is whatever is, is at that point. I genuinely can't see where the secret room is. Genuinely don't really care all that much whether or not anything actually happens um it, the the ones that piss me off are the ones that have like what is the what's the name of the dude that looks like he's just just sweats axe body spray and it's just like this week is it ghost hunters where he's just like this week on ghost hunters I'm basically molested by an entity, and like a light breeze hits him in like a mine shaft. And that's the only thing exciting that they have to show for like an hour of overhype. Like 55 minutes of just like, and that's when uh, we, we're going to assume that the babysitter probably had her skin peeled off with an ax, even though rumors say that she may have just moved to Portland. Taffy man, I'm gonna need the lasers to stop. I'm too hungover for all that nonsense today. Also, good morning and Taffy hug. Pico House in LA, him, APL, Diction, and Bruce uh, did essentially IRL phasmophobia. I fucking see, that was uh, that legitimately bottom left room, right wall. No, there's like water there. Oh no, you're right. There's a little ledge. Nice, nice catch. I was at a loss. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, my buddy Roger and I pitched that back in 1999 as potentially an honors project that the Honors College at Boise State would maybe fund so that he and I could do what we considered to be a science-based experiment to go to a place that was, you know, con generally considered haunted and then see, you know what non-hokey means we could use like to, to see what what like sort of traditional hokey like I brought this broken radio and this broken radio sometimes gets AM stations but mostly channels the dead <laughs> 
Sark was getting some funky readings and shit, so it was great from his angle. Um, yeah, what's the, does somebody have the tweet? Anyway, yeah, that's, that's been a, I, I don't believe in ghosts, and I don't believe in the afterlife. But for whatever reason, man, I'm a sucker for a good ghost story. I love ghost stories. I should have rolled that. What am I doing? I done I'm sorry buddy I'll make them pay daddy will make them pay that's on me I frankly I forgot about him I'll pay for what they did to you dice shot anybody know what the glyph does We'll try to keep him alive on this floor. Sounds like when Rooster Teeth did Achievement Haunter. That sounds interesting. Pico House has now been thoroughly investigated by the world's premier paranormal investigation team, but we've determined that it is haunted by a homophobic girl named Nathan that loves a chair. Case closed. That is a... That is, that is a trip. Yeah, my, my buddy Raj... Uh, my buddy Roger and I... Oh my god. This run would be exceptionally good if we managed to keep it. My bro buddy Roger and I on Halloween, uh, 1998, 1999, 98 maybe. Um, I mean, this this is the the. Oh no! I fucking don't know why I did that. I didn't even realize I'd set down a bomb. I fat fingered the E button, and then I've got so much crap around me I, I couldn't see if I'd done it. So now I really truly have to try to keep little man alive. And you forgive a fool. Um, yeah, my buddy Raj and I just out of boredom. We, we weren't old enough to drink. We weren't popular enough to be invited to parties. Oh, he's got Holy Mantle in each room. Oh my God, BFF uh, Lost Soul is amazing. Um, so we went and got like a cassette recorder and a Polaroid camera. And, um, and a Ouija board. The paranormal activity tool that you pick up at Toys R Us. And we went to a, a, a very illegally, went to a um, turn of the eight, or turn of the 19th century. Um, uh, graveyard up in the Idaho foothills like late 1800s like Civil War era uh, graveyard up in up in the foothills around Boise and uh, honestly you know like I said my buddy Raj is in the Secret Service now he, he's I've always called him I've always insinuated that I thought he was part Vulcan like, he's very, he's very, um, clinical. He's a very clinical man. But we had some really kind of freaky shit happen that night. 
Um, I can get into the whole like the whole story for anybody who might not have heard it if you want, but otherwise, there's a story time with Taffy about it that just like we go, you know, I go into all the stuff that we ended up doing. Uh, it, it was pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty. It was something else, man. Like. I, I wish I'd had the time, the you know, the time and the money to break all that down. If you're uh, watching the stream expecting crazy movie ghost shenanigans, you're gonna be let down hard. But uh, going into it with a fascination and appreciating what the human mind does to itself in the dark with ghost hunting equipment made it fun to watch. That I mean, that, that was kind of like that was mine and Roger's take too. Is that we had this crazy night, and I I feel like everything that could the, everything that happened could be explained just by um, virtue of group psychological fear. Group psychological fear, fear I felt like was e easily what explained away everything that was going on. But I'm not smart enough to tell you how. So it left just enough. It left just enough unexplained that, that it made for a good ghost story. Man, I miss Boise. I used to live a few blocks uh, from Bronco Stadium as a kid. How long ago, Sinister Humanoid? You and I may have lived in the same place at the same time, basically. How nuts. Um, I lived in uh, the Boise State dorms from 1998 to 2001. And then I lived in Garden City for a year. And then I lived uh, out by that Park Center Red Robin. I lived out there for a couple of months. Oh, 98 to 2002? No shit, you and I were right next to each other for a big chunk of time. You and I were right next to each other for a, a big chunk of time. Yeah, I started going to college. Ooh, Billy. I started going to college uh, in Boise in uh, fall of 2008, I finally did the graduation walk in December. Oh my God, what is this? I finally did the graduation walk in, uh... oh my God. Oh, BFF Holy Water. This runs uh, quickly spiraling out of control. Yeah, I finally did the walk in December 2003, but I wasn't living in Boise when I finished my degree. Yeah, I am grand. I like I listen. I'm not I'm not one of those militant uh I'm not one of those militant anti-spiritualist individuals, you know what I mean? Like I I love the idea and I want it to be true. Um I'm I'm rooting for people who are spiritualistic to be correct, honestly. Um I'm not out here trying to convert anybody. I don't know, you know? I don't know for sure what's going down. I just haven't seen anything that's convinced me. What's, what's bananas to me is that as I've gotten older and my concerns about my life have become more fun. Uh, what, what's really kind of done it for me is um, as I've gotten older, my concerns in my life have become much more um, real. Like, my concerns have become... It, my concerns have gone from the monster in the closet and the ghost haunting the attic and the, and, and, and the, the Babadook to, like you know, uh, mental health and mortgage and raising my kids correctly and career career security. Um, and with all those things rattling around inside my brain, I, I feel I feel like I don't have, I feel like I, my like my parents, or like my mother and my aunt and uncle, God, it's such a loud run. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. 
<clears throat> my parents and my aunt and uncle, aunts and uncles all have like crazy New Orleans Bayou story type shit. They all have banana ball stories that they tell as like, uh, you know, Baptist preachers and sons of ministers and living in old religious buildings and stuff like that. They tell stories that, that make the fucking hairs on, on my arm stand up. Um, so it's not just to say that I think just because you get older that that potentially loses validity. But as I've gotten older, I've found that I've just got less room. I've got like less room in my heart for that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I was born in Boise and my parents moved us down to SoCal, SoCal when I was four. Oh, so you mean you lived the first four years you were alive in Boise and that you and I didn't bump into each other at clubs. Yeah, time and be like I want to believe. I, I would love to see. Yeah, well, when you say kid, when I hear kid, I think 20 years old. That's literally half my age. My mother used to work at a sex shop on Broadway. Well, I can say that I was I was too self-conscious to have ever bumped into your mom. I had a girlfriend who may have bumped into your mom. She was very adventurous. My mom tells the story when she was dreaming that her grandmother stuck into heaven. It was basically classes on how to create worlds. Eventually, one of the caretakers realized she was there and gently escorted her back to her body and she woke up. I mean, like, my dad tells stories. Uh, like, my dad is not... Old Brad Caps is not somebody that you think of and go, well, that is a very spiritually rooted man. But my dad tells a story. Apparently, apparently my, my, my mom, like, I, you know, I hope it's okay that I tell this story, but <clears throat> apparently at one point my mom lo lost a pregnancy. Oh my God. Uh, I think it's gotta be Eucharist. I think it's got to be Eucharist because we've got potentially, we've got the, the filigree feather. So we have to get these fights. Uh, my mom lost a pregnancy that was a girl um, that I think was the, was the first one, was the first um, child that they, that they conceived. And my dad tells the story about how one day he was asleep. Excuse me? Hello? Oh. My dad tells a story about one day where he was asleep and uh, he he said that he was completely out cold and he said that he heard a little girl's voice say, Daddy, wake up. Mom and Ryan are home. And that's what, like, roused him from slumber. Um, and, and, and apparently that... You know that has bothered him for years like he, he said he, you know he was he was in between sleep and awake and yet at the same time like he remembers hearing that clear as day and, and you know it, it doesn't really like um, shift me one way or the other on the belief scale but it was real enough to him to him that it, you know in his 70s it bothers him to this day that story still haunts him 40 years later. Very, like a very simple little story. I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to believe. I'd, I'd love to think that, you know, that's, that's part of the reason I feel like I move with such, hello? There's a shop up here. Does Tainted Bethany have anything? Anybody want to take bets? Not yet implemented. It's a new character and a new item, Edmund, and it doesn't have an interaction? Are you kidding me, son? Oh, God damn, Ed. Um, may have bumped into me at that point. I would go to work with her sometimes and just sit in the office in the crib. Yeah, have you ever met a lovely woman named Ashley? Um, uh, 
the one uh, the one that gets me is my sister her youngest once said I'm glad you're my mom the other lady wasn't ready so I'm glad you're my mommy well was, I feel like there was something that Grayson said at one point Grayson was having a hard time getting to sleep when he was really little he was having a hard time getting to sleep and um, Amber asked him why she's like baby what's wrong why are you having a hard time getting to sleep and he said something about like he said something to the effect of like the, like he he basically insinuated that there was he, he said that scary lady keeps coming into my room and scratching my tummy that's the only thing that i can ever remember the boys saying where i was like oh right right kids instantly think you make you think your house is haunted they're like you know when you have a cat that just constantly stares over your shoulder and meows at some shit that's not there got it okay I don't believe in any after uh, in the afterlife or anything hardcore cliche paranormal uh, cliche paranormal and I'm very much into science uh, science rooted person but the occult and the idea of ghost hunting lands in the is it lands in the same pool as mythology for me it's so damn fascinating that I don't want to poop on it yeah no I like I have a I have a respect for I have a respect for the role that it plays in 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 the development of society I have a fascination with it in that I'd love for it to be real in much the same way that I would love superhero movies to be real. I don't presume to know so much that I can look at people dead in the eye and be like, well, not only is your thing wrong, but I have answers. I don't fucking have answers. I know what I can see, and I, I know what science can test, and that's, that's the stuff that I buy in on. But man, I love the idea of it being real. I'm rooting for it, you know what I mean? But I can't, I can't, like, in good conscience, I can't in good conscience, uh, you know, ever kind of give myself over to it w w without, you know, with without having my own personal revelation, you know? Goodness gracious. I wish I could get to Degas' room, man. There's, uh, like, there's just so much shit going on. When I was in, uh, let's see, the cat is actually great for anti-ghost tech. Every bump in the night I hear, I just go, oh, that's the cat. Yeah, it's, uh, what's, what, <laughs> you want to, you want to hear some funny stuff. And I actually do mean funny, because a lot of this is kind of heavy today, but. Hello? But a actually funny is that, like, when my wife and kids are here, every bump in the night is home intruders. And I've just got to go check it out and make sure that they're safe. When they're in Norfolk, like if they stay the night in Norfolk tonight, and I stay here in Richmond, 41 years old, same house, nothing different. Now though, with my wife and kid and the desire to defend them removed from the situation, now every bump I hear is a demon coming to kidnap me and take me to the shadow realm. Every bump I hear is a hateful spirit come to possess me. Amber and Grayson and Rory are here. It's a drug addict. It's a drug addict looking to get whatever they can, they can grab quickly and, and pawn so they can get their next fix. At worst, it's like some sort of like masochist or a serial killer or something. Amber and Rory aren't here. Amber and Rory and Grayson aren't here. It's, it's clearly a poltergeist come to drag me to the Shadow Realm. I'm clearly being dragged to the upside down. Why would it be anything else? What kind of fool would I be to presume it would be anything else? <laughs> the only one of my siblings that had problems with my older brother, but he had it uh, throughout most of his life. He was always afraid of being poisoned in his sleep because of terrible dreams that he ended up being died. Uh, that he ended up being diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. I've never had that kind of dream. My only visits have been from family. This is the yeah, story like, of the newest denizen of the cave. It's hard for me to not uh, categorize an awful lot of it as uh, um, sort of the, the same thing that I just described, right? Where it's... What the hell? No. It's, um, for, like, it, for me, 
I feel like it's very clearly my imagination running away from me. When Amber and the boys are here, there's a bump in the house. I go downstairs, it's pitch black. I'm not thinking about witches and zombies and poltergeists and, you know, uh, uh, um, shades and uh, uh, banshees and stuff like that. I'm, I'm coming downstairs looking to make sure that all the doors and windows are locked and everything's fine. But then if I'm home alone, if they stay in Norfolk tonight and I go to sleep and I hear a bump downstairs, it's, it's clearly the hellhounds loosed upon this world sent to drag my sweet, sweet man flesh back for demons to feed upon. Uh, Sideline Boyo, tier one for a year. 12, uh, 12 years of being a part of this wonderful community. Thanks to Zelda Ish and so many others for carrying me. I promise a part of my first income is dedicated to, to subs here. Thank you so much for improving my uh, my life a little bit, Taffy. Damn, that's the, the highest praise I feel like you can give a streamer. Is that the existence of their stream... Uh, even even a little bit increases the quality of your life that that should be the point of streaming uh there's so many people who try to get into it wanting to be the next ninja or shroud or whatever but my spicy take is that you know if you're going to be a streamer you should be doing it for reasons that don't have anything to do with money because as we all found out, most streamers fucking aren't making any money. <laughs> who, who'da thunk? That's the presentation of a paranoid schizophrenic. I listened to your description of your panic moments and it sounded a lot like my brother. I've got some funky shit rattling around upstairs. I, I just don't... This is a sh shitty excuse, but I just don't feel like I have the time or resources to... really dig into that kind of stuff. I've been thinking about trying to find a new therapist. Not because anything in particular has happened, it's just that I feel like I was doing good work with therapy and then COVID happened and I just kind of gave up on it. I feel like I could, I could probably square away a handful of my very real psychological demons. Um, if I would just, you know, recommit myself to the process of getting, getting, not, I, I want to say like help, like cry for help, but you know what I mean? Like general internal mental maintenance. I neither believe or disbelieve in ghosts. A few days ago, my flat screen TV flickered from the edge all over the screen in a slow glow. It happened multiple times, so I decided to pull the plug only for it to happen two more times. After that, I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you, and it stopped. I don't know if it was a ghost, but I wanted to be better safe than sorry. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, that's why I try to show respect, is because if the afterlife happens and I was wrong, you know, according to the religion I was raised in, I'm straight fucked. Uh, going straight into a fiery lake of, uh, uh, a lake of lava forever. Which, you know, feels a little unforgiving, but I, I'm not God, as far as you know. Um, but yeah, there's a part of me that's like, I, I'll stay open-minded until the, until the bitter end, but I don't know. I desperately want to find the, the super duper secret room on this floor. Unrelated to the afterlife. <laughs> Just, I've got so many charges. The the super secret room has to touch a, a, a real room. But I've got like I've got all these red hearts that we're just not using. And and just because I can't see the map, the map seeing the map would help an awful lot. Apparently when I was little, I'd tell my mom that man's color doesn't look so good, and then she'd ask me what I meant, and I said the color around him. Thank God she finishes that story and doesn't make me sound like some sort of child racist. Huh. Um, apparently when I was little, I'd tell my mom, uh, oh, so, sorry, that's a, uh, I've lived on my own generally fine most of the time, but the, that once when I, uh, once in a while time when you wake up with that feeling that something's in your room really, yeah, like, I mean, like, honestly, like, you know, that, that sixth sense feeling. Of just like your fight or flight kicks in, but you're in a place by yourself, and and you can't really easily justify exactly what the hell is going on, you know? Damn, I've done a lot of like just wandering and exploring. What I'm looking for now is I'm just looking for rooms that are attached. Did we find it? No. Yes. No. I'm looking for rooms that are attached to real rooms. I'm looking for like, uh, much like looking for secret rooms. I'm just looking for rooms that are attached 
that that potentially could lead us to the super duper secret room. It's just harder to do without the map. There it is. Oh my god. Yeah, that's gonna be alright. Gonna be alright. Oh, not doing too good myself. Shit, I have no idea where the boss fight is on this floor. I'm feeling alright. Had a shitty, shitty couple of weeks for a variety of reasons. I tried the over-the-counter anxiety medication or antidepressants. Of course, you need a doctor's note. Mental health is stigmatized here in India. My mother will genuinely kick me out of the house if I bring anything up. My mom was um, hesitant. My mom's been hesitant about a lot of things. I I I'll give her this credit, man. She's open-minded. She's come around on a lot of stuff. She's come around on 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 on, on LGBTQ rights. Uh, she wasn't, she was one of those people who's like, well, I don't, I don't hate the sinner, I hate the sin. But she's, like, she's come around on that. I mean, for God's sakes, when she came to visit me, she had to walk under a football pitch-sized, uh, pride flag. Because she visited us in June. And she had to walk under a football pitch-sized pride flag, which led to a conversation where I was like, so there's a, a pride flag the size of a parking lot hanging off my house. You be aware. Um, isn't it in that L room? That, that big one? The L room below. Um. Yeah, she's come around, she's come around on a, on a, oh, there it is. Good call. She's come around on a lot of things that, you know, uh, climate change. She, she fucking didn't buy in on climate change when I was talking to her about it like five, six years ago. Isaac. Nice. <clears throat> Um... A lot- a lot of things that, like, she's- she's been more receptive to- Oh, I've already been here. And I give her credit for that. Um... Therapy. When I told her initially that I was gonna try out therapy a couple of years ago, she- she was- you, you could hear the hesitance in her voice. That 1950s style, only crazy people go to therapy thing that rattled around inside her gourd. Um, the, the, that, that, that stigmatized mentality of like only people with real problems, you know, like only people with like clinical borderline criminal problems or, or uh, sincere psychological shortcomings go to therapy how have i failed my son that he'd need a stranger to tell tell him that his parents failed him somehow or whatever that used to be kind of what you could hear floating around inside her head uh she 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 turned around on that one which was nice um awesome cosmos what's going on good morning rebecca fawcett thank you for the itty bitties very much appreciated aaron good morning as well did I even turn? Oh god, I was gonna say, did I even turn my alarm on for the, for, you know, for breaks? But uh, I did turn the alarm on for breaks. It's just that the the conversation for the first two hours of a Saturday have been very intense today. I don't know where anything is. Oh, I, it's not the secret room. Um. We'll go this way. Oh, uh, nope. Oh, I can't explain it. Oh, I did get wafer. I was like, why am I not getting hurt more? Wafer. I have wafer. My dad was just uh, giving this me is story. shit Open about climate change the other night. Alaska just had the coldest day in recorded history, so I had to try hard not to get into a debate with him, uh, with that politi political mess of a person. Well, I mean, like, par part of it really was, like, uh, you know, like... Like Trump really leaned into the the verbiage. The original name of it was global warming, right? So then, when the effects of climate change would happen, and it would involve incredibly cold snaps, like the freeze that hit Texas, you know, the instant retort to that was, "Well, if it's global warming, where's all this cold air coming from?" So now that it's been reframed as climate change, and it's just like, no, it really just means. We're fucking up the planet, and it's leading to incredibly drastic swings in weather, and the you know change in ocean levels. 
it, it's it's made conversation with like my my boomer mother much easier because it's not just like that dismissive like how can it be global warming when so so many places are so cold yo mayor aaron thank you so much for the tier one month one sub chat help me uh welcome mayor aaron because ultimately how frequently do we see brand new tier one month one subs that you guys don't snipe them that they aren't uh, coerced into being here with, with with no input of their own to speak of that's a, a a rare and beautiful occurrence thank you so much my parents didn't uh, take well to the idea of therapy when i was younger they steadfastly believed the doctors experimenting on crazy people measured today wait yeah it's like ultimately it's that sort of uh that mentality that like that sort of 50s mentality that like you know, board, borderline crazy housewives, like housewives who have snapped and like psychopathic killers, you know, those are the people who need therapy. And you could, you could 100% hear that in my mom's voice so much. So initially that the first thing she asked was basically like, the first thing that she asked was basically like, well, can you just get put on some sort of medication? Like a, another, and, and and again it wasn't meant it wasn't meant uh with malicious intent but this that that uh, sign of a different time boomer mentality of like well can't you just fix it with a pill no, again in her head it was like wouldn't it just be easier to get a pill for that if the movie the day after tomorrow's taught me anything is that global warming can lead to global cooling. It bums me out because that movie, like, it's a fun watch, but, like, the science on that has been so ruthlessly debunked because it's it's a Roland Emmerich. It's, a, it's Roland Emmerich, right? It was one of Roland Emmerich's many I can't wait to destroy global landmarks movies. The Rapid, what's going on? How's Early Isaac? I'll tell you this. Uh, oh, no. Early Isaac is dynamite. Uh, we are ravaging this game with a Beth Bethany run. Absolutely ravaging this game with a Bethany run. I can't really sit here and tell you that much is... I can't really sit here and tell you that much interesting is happening besides us dominating the living shit out of this game. But it does... It, it has freed me up to have conversations with people. And for the first time in a long time, play, play Isaac with my peripheral vision. Ew. Isn't that the second time I've had the Bible? Maybe not. I don't know what I'm holding on to this for. It made me remember that if I didn't want the Bible later, I needed to get rid of it now. Or if I didn't want the Bible later, I needed to get rid of, um... What's it? Pandora's box now. I'm a college student who lives with his parents uh, because that's the norm here. College uh, kids stay with their parents even after marriage, or children stay with their parents even after marriage. So my opportunities uh, for therapy, both with respect to money and time, is very low. Well, I hope you find a way to make that happen, Sideline Boyo. If you if you need help, I hope you're able to get it. That sucks. Um. Yeah, no, Azusa. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> if. <laughs> if every horror movie set in an asylum from the 50s has taught me anything. It hasn't been painfully hot. I've, there have been a couple of Octobers where it's been painfully hot in the last couple of years. Loud noises. Um... Yeah, there have been a couple of a uh, couple of Octobers recently where it's been like summer hot, and I've hated it. <clears throat> um, this October has been warmer than I would like, but at least it hasn't been so bad that I've been like desperate to not go outside. out of curiosity taffy do you play any instruments i do not i've always wanted to learn the piano 
Um, but I just never found the time or had the resources. I probably had the time in my 20s and 30s. And I guess it's better, you know, it's never, never too late. Um, but I feel like I have less, less time now than I ever have had. But if I was to ever, hello? If I was to ever pick up an instrument, I, I, I have a very romantic relationship with piano. Both my sons are taking piano lessons right now. This is the story to of a the mama, denizen of the cave. A lot of new viewers in here today. Happy to see y'all. Salty Sparks tier one, 27 months. Happy Saturday, everyone. Each and every one of you deserves thanks for being who you are, except Noah. <laughs> Ah, I do love a good joke at Noah's expense. Salty, thank you for the resub and the giggle. It's very loud. 18 degrees Celsius here in Ottawa. That's uh you you've got the you've got the weather today that I'm getting tomorrow. You've got the weather today that I'm getting tomorrow. Where are all my red rooms? This is not, uh, this is not it. That feels second secret roomy. Nope, okay, fuck me then. Never really got into piano myself. Tried it a, a lot when I was younger. Really decided it wasn't what I wanted. I, I mean, like, we, we told our sons that they could pick whatever instrument they wanted, and both of them said that they were interested in piano. What's funny is that I, I, <clears throat> I want to say it was like a Coldplay song or something. Something came on the radio on the drive back from, uh, the corn maze yesterday. And it had, like, some piano with guitar in it. <clears throat> and I turned to Rory, and I was like, Hey, if you practice your piano, you could play piano in a, in a rock band like this. Wouldn't that be cool? And he straight up told me that he didn't want to play, like, rock piano. He wanted to play, like, classical. And I was like, man, eh, fucking good for you for knowing what you want, man. Like, if you, you want to play classical piano, you play classical piano, bud. Dude, we are cleaning up on this run. I feel like there's a part of me that wishes adamantly that this game would like spread the wealth around a little bit. I can't help but, but kind of wish that some of these advantages that I have I can't help but wish that some of these advantages that I have on this particular monster run. Oh, dude, my uh, my technology, my technology wisp burst. I can't help but wish that uh, you know, instead of having every advantage I could ever possibly want on a run, on this run, that like maybe just maybe it would give me enough to win on this run and then spread the rest out across all the other runs. Run. Well, it's a lot less noisy now that technology's gone. So many milks. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, you know, who, who knows what may change in the boy's life. Uh, I'm not really feeling... I'm not really feeling it. Um, who knows what'll change in the boy's life. Where, I, you know, I wanted to be a fighter pilot when I was nine years old. As you can clearly see, I lived that dream to its fullest. I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy and fly F-16s when I was a kid. And here I am, streaming on Twitch after my illustrious fighter pilot career. The only partnered ace that I know of. Oh. 
You're doing great, Mom. I actually wanted to be a fighter pilot until my parents actually took me to Colorado Springs to tour the Air Force Academy. And I saw how disciplined the lifestyle was with white glove inspections and like forcing freshmen to walk on a path that's like on the, like on, if there's a sidewalk, right? Sidewalk down the middle. There's a strip of path on the edge of each side of the sidewalk and freshmen are not allowed to walk in the middle. They walk this like, exterior edge path and basically are like you know have to be like subservient to the upperclassmen um and once i really lo looked reality starkly in the face and realized that like becoming a fighter pilot was nothing like iron eagle uh i was i dipped out in my early teens Uh, I'm an orchestra teacher, and I always ask my students what kind of music they want to play in the beginning of the year, and I always have like five or ten kids say, no pop music, just classical. That's encouraging. <laughs> At least you can be glad that your kids didn't choose violins. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm glad that my kids picked an instrument that I already, I already had a keyboard laying around the house from a point in time where I thought I might teach myself uh, piano. Animal Crossing got a huge update. Update will be on November 5th. You think I'll be back to Animal Crossing again? I, I meant to be back to it more frequently than I am, and then I got sick, and it really fucked my entire life. <laughs> it, it screwed all of my intentions. It, like, it corkscrewed my intentions right into the ground. Um, I have meant to be uh, playing, like, Animal Crossing on nights and weekends. Right, it's a little late for that. I had meant to be playing Animal Crossing on nights and weekends. Um, but when I got sick, it was just everything that I could handle to sort of keep this train on the tracks, let alone play extra games on the side. Um, but I definitely plan on, I plan on doing a little bit of Animal Crossing every month for the next year or so. I'd like to not have to time travel to get stuff done. That's probably not super realistic, but actually, because we have Immaculate Conception. Experimental pill. Mm. What's going on in here? Is this just a room? Oh, it's the second secret room. Nice. I actually didn't see the Animal Crossing 2.0 trailer. Rini came in here and lost her shit over how cool it was yesterday. So I, I definitely need to check it out at some point. Yeah, Rini came in here and lost her ever-loving mind yesterday. Taffy, don't you have the Bible? I, you know, I've got, I've got the, 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 the Megaton. Uh, too, but I, I just have not done a very good job of toggling between items. I've been more interested in conversation with chat today than I've been interested in being uh, particularly min-maxi with the run. I feel like I had a much more unrealistic lofty goals for myself as a child for years. I just wanted to be a scientist and develop the key to immortality. I don't know. I feel... I feel like my goals have been unrealistic most of my life. And then, depending on who you ask, I either had the fortune or misfortune of succeeding with the last one. Or at least the last one that I assume is coming for a while. I spent a decade as a kid wanting to be a fighter pilot. I spent, um, yeah, that's actually more useful now. <clears throat> I spent a, a decade as an adult wanting to be an actor, so much so that I got a degree in it. And then I've, I've spent a decade wanting to be a content creator. 
It's just that against all odds, this one worked. Against all odds, this one panned out. Taffy says, "Fighter pilot, I just hear less fu uh, fun fighter sim, jet, fighter jet sim games. It'll be really funny in a in like a year." Um, I took a bounty one time on on Ace Ace something or other. It was really good. It's the first time I really like played a uh, is the first time I played a fighter uh, like a flight fighter sim since I was a kid. I cut my teeth on on Commodore 64 games like Stealth Fighter, and there was one that was like a F-15 Eagle. It was, I didn't think it was as good as Stealth Fighter, but it was still enjoyable. Um, yeah, my dad and I bonded over over fighter sim games for quite some time when when I was a kid. Also, Zombie Ron Swanson, welcome back, dude. Psycon, good morning. The reason I wanted to develop the key to immortality is because I had an existential crisis at the age of seven while playing a PS1 game. I, I did that to Rory, my, my seven-year-old, and I felt terrible about it. I didn't mean to. Um, I'm constantly trying to feed their minds with, like, science and math and engineering. I'm constantly trying to feed them with, like, science, math, st STEM information. I want them to be scientifically oriented. I, like, listen, my, my wife, my wife was born and raised Catholic. She's instilling them with very basic Christian principles, and I'm fine with it. I, like, I, I feel like so, some, you know, so I, I took some good things away from Christian morality when I was a kid, and I don't mind imparting those things on, on the boys. The good ones, like love your neighbor. Um, you know, don't don't be fucking evil. Um, be grateful, be humble. Um, but I also, you know, I also try to kind of put my two like not. It's not that Amber's against it, but like my two cents in where I'm just like I really uh, aggressively push uh, STEM information on them. And in one instance, I was having them watch, there's a, oh my god. There's a uh, YouTube channel called Kurtzkazad. I'm, I'm, I butchered it, but they also feel, I feel like they butcher it too, and it's their name. Um, and my little six-year-old boy, Rory, man, I felt so bad. Um, I accidentally showed him at six years old a YouTube video that described the heat death of the universe. The imminent heat death of... I say imminent. But the the inescapable heat death of the universe. And it was a it was an idea that was too big. And it was he was too young. And I, I, to this day, feel terrible about it. Hey, euthanasia. Um... Such a stupid game to have... What was the game? Stupid game to have an existential crisis over in the game. There's a hundred year old wise man at the time. I only had the demo disc. I played through the whole game when I was 16 and found out there was uh, a 1,000 year old wise man and a 10,000 year old wise man. The game was Toomba. I'm trying to think if there were any games that had like sincerely profound effects on me from like a psychological standpoint. I can't summon any off the top of my head. I think it's because when I was a kid, like, games were not bad, but they weren't, like, intense enough to give you, like, uh, existential breakdowns. Oh my. Yeah. Some, I say some kind of crummy late game items, but I can't even tell anymore. I can't even tell if items are, are potentially helping or hurting the cause. 
My guy, are you serious? You're the world's strongest minion. I will gleefully full clear this floor. I've never played Toomba. Taff, you haven't played To the Moon. I have not. Uh, I believe it is on our list. I think a lot of people are wanting to watch me play that and then struggle with it. <laughs> From what I can tell, there are a handful of people who are uh, seem genuinely excited for me to potentially play that and have the same emotional crisis that they did. Yo. Let's-a go. I think I'm finally in a spot where I feel good enough to just run it out. That said, I, I still need to know where the end of the game is. I'm gonna come back and obviously kill Mango Santa. Tell me they made it went under in the early 2000s. Shame to use the second game hinted at a third one. Considering the sequel came out in 99, I don't think it's happening. I felt that way about like Sierra games back in the day. I, I loved Sierra games when I was a teenager. <clears throat> Sierra games and um, yeah, like Phasmophobia, Seventh Guest, Eleven Hour. Hell, I even got in on a little Leisure Suit Larry at a formative pubescent age. I didn't get in on the LucasArts stuff. I don't know why LucasArts, uh, I don't know if Sierra made, I don't think Sierra made Phasmophobia, not Phasmophobia, uh, Phantasmagoria. I might've, I might've slipped on that one. Like, if, 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 Luc if, Lu if LucasArts was making high art, then I was interested in the stuff that was like the Cinemax of, I was interested in the stuff that was like the Cinemax of blossoming computer entertainment. Gotta head out and get to bed. Night shifts suck. Hey, uh, I hope you have a productive and fast, uh, yeah, I guess late night at work. I did graveyard shifts when I was in my 20s. And I did not enjoy it. Most nostalgic Sierra game was Lords of Magic Special Edition. So many hours. I didn't play Lords of Magic. Hello? I must have. I must have megatunned the directed tears, which is. It's fine. Okay, I got hurt. This run's going to hell! Clearly, we'll never survive. Kinda tempted to just blast through all these safe hearts I've got, but there's a part of me. Ah. Whatever. Blowing through all these red hearts, why not? Feeling pretty confident in our in our chances. Ah, uh, Maniac Mansion. I fucking loved Maniac Mansion. I played the shit out of Maniac Mansion when I was a kid. I was obsessed with that game. Not... 
Oh, I must have lost the marked tears or whatever. That's fine. I prefer it that way.